just like that, it's time for our weekly roundup of all the things Lady just ain't going to do this week. Number one, more shootings. Now look, with so much happening in the world week to week, it is easy to lose track of the fact that almost every day in this country, someone is getting killed by a gun. I was about to say, and it ain't because they've committed a crime, but I didn't. Because even if you do commit a crime, why should you die about it? This week, people got shot up at a church in Alabama. There wasn't much on the news about it because we've been busy talking about Donald Trump and his roving band of devils, but... It's happened, and it's happening across the country. Again, the moral of the story is people with guns kill people. So be on the lookout when you vote this November for folks who have not only common sense approaches to gun control, but also common sense approaches to how we meet people's needs so that everyone can live safe, full, and dignified lives. Here's what we want more of this week, though. And it's a long list, because Lady loves you. January 6th hearings. So we chatted very briefly about this last week, and Lady ventured out on a limb to say that the hearings belonged in the Lady Light category. Well, Lady is sticking to her story there. And, well, let's get into it, and we can discuss Lady's advice shortly. So the January 6th hearings have been packed with stories about how Donald J. Trump and his cabal of fascists that he assembled in and out of the White House, attempted to overthrow the government. Yeah, I I still, every time I say that, I'm like, this motherfucker. Attempted to overthrow the government in a tantrum that basically amounted to, fuck you for not voting for me, and now I'm going to try to kill Mike Pence for not being a total fucking liar too. These hearings were hours and hours and hours of testimony from over a thousand people who were interviewed about what they saw what they heard, and what they did to either facilitate or stop one of the greatest disasters in American history. I'm tempted to say too long don't watch because the people who put these hearings together made the mistake of getting so far in the weeds that unless you're a junkie for this type of shit, it's likely instead that you'll probably change the channel just to get a little bit of living single in before your next Zoom call. Now, We know what the fuck happened. But what's important about these hearings is that it lays bare how completely and totally serious these people were and still are. Not just for being a sucker for Donald Trump. I mean, can you imagine this being your fucking legacy? Who am I? Oh, just somebody who looked the other way when the sitting president of the United States riled up a bunch of people to try and hang Mike Pence and Nancy Pelosi Because this nigga Trump ain't had a mandate to lead. No big deal. That's my legacy. What kind of shit? Anywho. (laughs) But also, these people are fucking still serious about taking power and keeping it. The Department of Justice announced that they would like to subpoena all the interviews and testimony that this January 6th commission has collected. And no doubt they have some shit up their sleeves. But real talk, though, Lady thinks it's more than likely that not much will happen from this by way of criminal charges for the criminals that propped up Donald Trump. Why, you ask? Because for some godforsaken reason, there is this very bizarre adoration for moderation in this country, but only under certain conditions, like holding people the fuck accountable for riling up the racists and giving them a fucking political platform. Also, if y'all finna do this again, have Ava or Shonda direct this thing. Other things Lady loves this week is white nationalists getting stopped in their tracks. So this week, police in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, interrupted a plan by white nationalists to disrupt and target a pride parade there. Local police arrested 31 men, all of whom had ties to a white nationalist organization called Patriot Front, after receiving a panicked 911 call saying that a group dressed like a little army was getting into a moving truck. Patriot Front promotes fascism, and the creation of a white ethno-state. Police said no one was found with weapons, but there was a smoke grenade discovered alongside a collection of shields and shin guards and documents that were outlining what their operations were going to be. They had come from at least 11 states across the country, including Texas, Colorado, and Virginia. Since arresting this group, the police department has been receiving threats, death threats, according to Reuters. The FBI is now assisting with this investigation. 
In upstate New York, the Buffalo shooter was charged this week with federal hate crimes, including 10 federal counts of committing a hate crime resulting in death, three counts of committing a hate crime with the intent to kill, and 10 counts of using a firearm to commit murder during and in relationship to a crime of violence. Oh, and three counts of using and discharging a firearm in relation to a crime of violence. Now, the Justice Department complaint goes on to say that the motive for the attack was to prevent Black people from replacing white people and eliminating the white race and to inspire others to commit similar attacks. So what can Lady even say about this that would make it any clearer? Your former president lifted the sewer cover and allowed these groups back above ground, whereas before, for the most part, they were encouraged to stay in the gutter and not come out to play. Basically, folk were like, we prefer our racism a little more dry than what y'all have to offer, so stand down, we got this. (laughs) Well, Donald Trump was like, nah, come one, come all, because since I am a weird-ass fringe leader, I need more people to have my back, and y'all look just right for the cause. Doesn't matter that this clown ain't willing to go steady with anybody but himself. These groups have found a friend in Donald Trump and his band of wayward conspiracy theorists. But seriously, all jokes aside, y'all, if you play with fire, you gonna get burned. And that's exactly what's happening right now. Now white supremacists are energized because they got a huge fucking platform and have been recruiting like crazy, like wild, just off the strength of people being scared about change. Now they're jumping out of moving trucks, trying to disrupt pride parades, shooting up black people in grocery stores and writing manifestos and shit. You really can't make this shit up. These people would like to start a civil war in this country. And I am not saying that with any level of facetiousness. That's their actual goal, to use violence to promote and advance their agenda of a white ethno state. Now, Lady certainly does not love that. But what she does love is that A, in this little blue dot in Idaho, the police were not with the shits, which is interesting given the context where white supremacists are all up inside law enforcement agencies. And B, that the Department of Justice and the FBI is all up in the shit too. Now, before any of you waywards try to accuse me of cheering for the police, let me just say this. That's actually their fucking job. And as long as we have police, I would prefer that they do shit like that as opposed to the shit we'd see them doing in our communities. Yes, I said it. Other things that Lady loves this week is the runoff election for Secretary of State in Georgia that is happening Tuesday. In Georgia, there will be a runoff election to determine who the Democratic candidate will be for the Secretary of State. As we've discussed previously on this podcast, B. Wen will face off against D. Dawkins Hagler. Lady has been hearing interesting tidbits on politics as it relates to this race in particular, especially that there's a significant amount of mudslinging going on. And in particular, claims that because Dawkins Hagler is black and Wen is Vietnamese, that voting for Wen would amount to racism. Now, rest assured, my friends, that this is a ridiculous assertion, particularly because that is not actually how racism works. My friends, I have said many, 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 many times that racism isn't about people being mean to each other. That's an impact of racism, an effect, if you will. But the cause of racism is systemic exclusion based on shit you can't do anything about because you don't have the power to make the rules or change them. By systemic, I mean designed by and enforced by rules. There are no rules that make Vietnamese people more powerful than Black people. There are no laws that give Vietnamese people power and privilege at the expense of Black people. Not one. So... Unless you are somehow restricted from voting for a black person over a Vietnamese person by law, stop saying that shit is racist. Racism is what happens when you make a bunch of laws making it harder for some people to vote. That's an example of racist shit. But further than that, in so many ways, voting is about choosing the person that is best to move your agenda forward. And if you can't stay focused on telling the people why a vote for you is a better vote than a vote for another person, based on your record, your values, and your vision for the role, you definitely ain't getting my vote. Anywho. (laughs) 
I fucking love y'all and I love this podcast. Let's keep it going. Welcome back to Ladies Love Notes, where we give you all of the real about being single and dating in your 40s. Listen, y'all, every week when I'm preparing the podcast, I'm on the fence about what to add in these here love notes, but God always provides. This week, I have had no fewer than five different people reach out to me about breakups after long-term relationships. Now, a few of y'all have reached out about dating after long-term relationships. And I want to tell you, my heart both breaks and sings for us, y'all. I'm here to affirm this shit is a lot. Now, I am by no means an expert on any of this shit. I am learning right beside you. Please believe it. One thing I can offer that I think is working for me and I hope will work for you too, be patient with and kind to yourself. Now, people ask me if I'm dating here in the ATL, and honestly, I'm not. Sometimes I want to, but a lot of the time, I'm like a little scared to, if I'm being honest. I mean, I've had a lot of change in a short period of time, and I had my fucking heart broken in a epic way. So my grind these days is about doing a lot of prayer, staying consistent with my therapy, and learning more about what I want and need in relationships in the first place. I did my share of catting off before I left the Bay, but something is different in this place. I'm learning the place, the people, the heat, all that. I'm also learning about weightlifting, and I I fucking love that. In this learning phase, it is all about excavation, digging up all of those calcified artifacts that shape how I be on any given day of the week. It's also learning about how to really be alone. Back home, I was on my own, but I was with my community. I was in my stomping grounds I've been in since I was a baby. Here, I know a few people. I'm meeting more, but everything is new to me, and I actually spend a lot of time alone. Right now, I'm liking it, but it still takes some getting used to. It's a lot. I probably cried two to three times a week. And whenever I feel weird about that, I'm like, girl, it's good. It's called releasing. I can still feel And I'd be looking at all that shit in the face like, whoa, that was hard and that hurt, but I release you. Sometimes I swap stories with my girlfriends about the streets and we confirm for and with each other that we do not, in fact, belong to the streets. I'm working up to the part where I let myself get out there again. And I think that makes sense, right? I mean, when you're starting over after a heartbreak or a separation or both, it's totally natural to feel like you don't know what you're doing. And Quite possibly, you don't. (laughs) I know I don't. But for those of you who are reeling from a breakup or healing from a breakup and or getting back out there after a breakup and feeling a little bit clumsy and gun shy, it's totally okay. It's real weird out there. And also, you're adapting to a new set of circumstances. It's pretty normal to be looking around there like, what the fuck is even happening here? Now, I share these notes with you, my friends, in the hopes, dear listeners, that something in here resonates for you. And if nothing else, that you don't feel alone in this. As I said last episode, it's been a year for me since me and my dude broke up. Now, a lot has happened in that last year. And at the same time, it still kind of feels like it just happened yesterday. I haven't dated, like really dated, since I was in my 20s. The challenge, though, for me right now is I don't want to date like I did in my 20s. I mean, there was like that one white guy who knew everything about black everything. And we went out on a date and afterwards he invited me over. And when I walked in his house, he had not one book that was not about black people. Yeah, I definitely called it right there and then. And I didn't talk to him again until probably about five years ago. Okay, he's married now to a black woman, but we'll talk about that. Um, It could not be me. I mean, then there was that other guy I dated in my 20s. He was totally beautiful. And when I say fine, this man was fine, fine. But like, I still think about how fine he was. To this day, he had long, beautiful hair. He rode a motorcycle. He did tattoos and he had beautiful tattoos. And I was so enamored when he asked me out until I realized after we'd gone out once or twice and then ended up at his place afterwards, I was pretty sure he was gay and not out yet. I mean, I have stories for days about dating in my 20s. And my point is this. 
I'm too old to be dating like I was in my 20s. And that has nothing to do with the number of people I date or do whatever with and everything to do with who I'm spending my time with. At 41, I just don't feel like I have all the time in the world to waste. I'm definitely not trying to get married right now or maybe ever, even, ever again. I don't want to date the people I would have dated at 20. So I'm working on that. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I am definitely a romantic. I believe in connections that you least expect. I believe in chance. Every time I've ever met someone I've fallen in love with and who has loved me back, it just happened. Spotting each other in a crowd, a random direct text message, an awareness like, oh, mm, a little energy here and I like how that feels. I'm not on the apps. I don't do online dating or whatever or whatnot. Not because it's whack in general. I don't know about it, but because I know the way I fall in love is energy, not profiles and swipes. But being open to all that, whether you're down for online dating or not, it takes work and mostly self-work. I'm most definitely working on myself right now. I'm going to be even more of a catch than I already am, honey, because I am working on healing all the shit that gets me caught up in the shit I don't want. Now, in order to do that well, it requires me to be patient with myself and exercise some very, very good advice that my bestie gave me the other day, which is let things unfold. Now, of course, my therapist is on this same shit with me too, okay? And after nearly a year of going back and forth with this man I still love and I'm working on falling out of love with and finally making some good progress, I think, I don't know. My therapist always says to me, what would happen if you didn't jump in to save, direct, analyze, or otherwise try and control the situation? We want you to find someone who can meet you in all the right ways. Their shits together. They don't disappear. You have mutual benefit and they can actually hold you down when you need it. You can breathe deep because you know they actually really fucking got you. How will you know if you've actually met that person if you keep jumping in to make them that person? Fish. I mean, I'm telling you she'd be reading me every week. Weekly. Let things unfold. Remember my mantra for the year? Patience and surrender. Patience and surrender in other words, letting things unfold, has saved me from some dumb shit in the last few months. And what it hasn't saved me from, it has allowed me not to get caught up in for long. Letting things unfold is teaching me some stuff about being patient, not trying to control everything, including fate and destiny. Also, people will tell on themselves if you're not too busy making them your hopes and dreams. So let motherfuckers do their thing. But also... Patience and surrender and letting things unfold has also meant I've had to let go of trying to control who I meet, how I meet them, and how it goes. <laughs> yes, I want to get swept away by somebody. I want to meet someone and I want to feel chemistry and butterflies and I want to have a first kiss and a first fuck and all the first. For the first time in a long time, though, I'm working on not being in a committed relationship. I'm working on letting go of something that I was pretty sure was going to be my forever. And I'm working on not comparing everybody to him. It's a lot of work. And some days I do better than others. I'll admit it. Sometimes my surrender looks like cynicism. It's something I'm grappling with for sure. I mean, like I said, I'm a romantic. And even though that's true, I'm kind of tied up in a story that I might not find someone or at least not someone who sparked in me what that man did and, and still in some ways still does. But that's where patience comes in. Who am I to tell the future? Better to just be present and patient and let life unfold. It's less pressure that way. I'm proud of myself. Proud of myself for saying yes to meeting new people, even if and when it turned out they weren't for me for one reason or another. I'm proud of myself for having and enforcing my boundaries. And the good news is this. I'm getting clearer about what I want and what lady just ain't finna do no more. It's the Wild West out there, y'all. Be gentle with yourself. There's no need to rush back in unless and until you're ready. But when you finally are ready, remember to let things unfold. <laughs>